Okay, let's start. Welcome uh, to our session. Uh, Volkswagen's Group IT um, Operations Team Adventurous Journey to the Land of OpenStack. Uh, my name is Gerd Prussmann. I'm with Mirantis. My name is Tillmann Schulz. Uh, yeah, I'm with Volkswagen. Uh, the Volkswagen Group um, consists of 12 brands and financial services. It's not a brand, but uh, part of the group. Uh, Well-known names like Volkswagen, Audi, Skoda, and others. And um, the Volkswagen Group manufactures cars in 31 countries, 121 production sites, and um, employs 610k people in manufacturing cars or services for car owners, financial services, and stuff like this. And they build 42k cars per day and ship them to 153 countries. And they made a revenue out of it, 230 billion euros per year. Obviously, an organization of this size needs IT. And we are from infrastructure operations, one part of the IT department of the group IT from Volkswagen. And we manage, or the group manages, uh, the department manages four data centers, 7,000 servers, and employs 80 plus people. And we are talking about the traditional part of the IT, not about the cloud. So um, this department manages more than 250 business, business critical, critical applications. And that's what we, in the cloud world, call uh, the legacy stuff. But that's the, the, these are the applications that create the revenue currently, so a very important part. And there are multiple IT departments and other brands as well, so this is not the only IT department. There are more or less independent IT departments and other brands as well. Um, the project we talk about today is the VW Group IT Cloud, uh, we abbreviated the VW GITC, and we have two major goals in this area. The first goal is to support the business objectives from Volkswagen with respect to digitization and new markets like connected car IoT, car sharing, urbanization, things like that. And the second one is um, we follow a slightly different paradigm than in the past. We don't try to um, press people to use the technology from central IT. We try to convince our customers, our uh, internal customers, that the offering that we have is a very good offering and competitive to um, other offerings at the market. So we have um, a product and we want to sell it to our internal customers and convince them with our offering. Um, but besides of that, um, there are more specific goals for this project. So on the one hand, it should be in the future the global integration platform for all brands, which means they could participate in building the cloud in operating the cloud and um, running services on top of this cloud or their applications on top of this cloud. Um, even if it's connected currently to OpenStack, it's not, the project covers also hybrid cloud approaches, so public cloud as well. It's not only um, private cloud. Um, alongside the, the project and the technologies, um, one aim is to foster methodologies connected to um, cloud uh, to the cloud model, like DevOps or agile development, agile processes, and the innovation in IT in general. Um, the major value that we would like to um, deliver to our customers is to help them shorten their time to market for their products, for their applications. For example, for connected car or digitization products to bring as fast as possible their functionality to their markets. Um, but because it's a Volkswagen product for their internal departments, um, we have to cover or embrace policies from governance, from uh, compliance as well, um, to deliver a secure product to the, to the customers and save the data or safeguard the security of the data of our customers. And um, by using open source, by the way, using open source in big corporate uh, organizations is very challenging. Um, by using open source, we also want to use the model behind open source, the collaborative model to create software, to um, run software, and to enhance software in the future. So VW also aims to introduce kind of a corporate open source model into the company 
to help the various departments developing software. Mm. So that one department creating software would be able to um, benefit from stuff that was already created in other departments and use the same stuff, for example, for uh, config management, puppet manifests, whatever it is, heat templates, to have joint forces on creating the stuff. And one <coughs> target in the back, for sure, is cost saving as well. Um, the cloud has a lot of uh, advantages over, over traditional systems with respect to cost reduction, and that's one of the targets as well. Um, currently, the cloud is deployed only on one location in Wolfsburg in the headquarters of uh, Volkswagen. But um, there is already planning to deploy it in various locations around the world. This is a global approach, so the cloud will be operated and, and deployed in multiple um, locations in the world. Um, the next one probably will be de deployed in the Czech Republic. And after that, um, the next locations will be somewhere in the area around the world, so APEC, either North America, Latin America, or China, or Asia in general. Um, as already mentioned, it's a public cloud. There's a part for public cloud as well, and there we work uh, together with the usual suspects in this area, the big um, public cloud providers around the world. Um, that's one example of the workloads running on the cloud. It's um, the car configurator um, for the Spanish market that was the first application installed and running on the cloud. Um, actually, if I would click this link, <laughs> we um, could see this uh, application. Um, Ricardo, I have seen you a few minutes ago. There's Ricardo. Uh, he invested a lot of work into this application and suffered a lot from our problems at the beginning. But if you want to know how it feels to deploy on this cloud and consume this cloud, then you should talk to him. It's, it's one of our dear, dearest customers now. Um, this is the timeline we followed in, in creating the cloud. So um, the initial planning took place in the middle of the last year. Um, VW was already consuming virtualization technologies, for example, and the next logical step was to, to deploy cloud and to use and benefit uh, from, from the cloud. Um, after that, we started a proof of concept um, phase and selected a vendor and um, started the pre-production. So until the um, end of the last year, there was, uh, we built up the first system, put it onto pre-production, and presented it to pot uh, potential customers so that they would be able to um, help us pivoting on the services that would be required in the first setup. And then the system started in production. So for, for example, the NGW website started implementing on this production website. And we added um, platform as a service as well. So there is Pivotal Cloud Foundry running on this platform as well. And then we are now in the phase four, and that's the phase we are currently working in. Um, we call it the rise of the Titan because we added a lot of um, stuff or plan to add a lot of stuff, and we are currently developing all of these services. And in this timeline, we picked out two, um, yeah, we could call it incidents, but major decisions to change our way. The first one is the Samurai versus Ninja incident, and the second one is uh, project versus product management. Samurai versus ninjas. Um, I already um, mentioned that um, the project was born in the traditional department. In this traditional department, the, the approach is to plan things in a waterfall model, um, plan releases and release these releases after six months, for example, deploying it on golden machines, very reliable, very expensive, and do approvals for specific parts or prov provisioning, for example, of parts of the resources manually. And it, tooks, uh, it takes months or years to deploy a new system, but it's very reliable, high quality, and it works, but it takes a long time. And if you have problems with your planning or issues with your technology, then you have to start over. It takes a long time. On the other hand, in the cloud area, you have an agile approach. You have continuous integration, continuous deployments, things like this. Um, you try to leverage benefits from commodity hardware, for example, and you have automatic workflows. And your aim is to deploy in days or weeks, but not in months and years. Um, but we want to benefit from both areas. So if we introduce cloud, we want to have kind of the same quality from the old world. And we took one decision. Um, we staffed the team from resources from the traditional team, 
and said, okay, we want to achieve all the benefits from, benefits from the right-hand side, but we want to do it with the specialists, with the uh, subject matter experts from the traditional world, and try to infect the old world with these method methodologies as well. The second one, uh, second important change was to um, move from project management to product management. So the traditional world is organized um, with very uh, precise project planning. It's all about scope, cost, and um, quality and schedule, but it was done on department level. So the storage department plans something, the operational department plans something, something the server operations plans something. And at the end, that doesn't necessarily fit together, especially if you are under time pressure and you want to deliver a benefit to the, to the, um, to the business, for example, for digitization uh, workloads, you have to be very fast. Um, we suffered a lot from this because from, from this silo point of view, it was very understandable why the departments did this, but at the end, there was, there was a problem to bring all the things together. So we switched to a product management approach, um, which means think about your service um, as a service for a customer. What are your internal customers? Um, what is the product? What is the value for the business? Um, what is your market? Do you have a market for database as a service, for example? Um, that was very um, um, important, especially because we required from these products owners who create the, the products that they uh, incorporate operations as well. So they have to deliver an operational and support model for their services. Otherwise, like in the, in the old world, um, there was a, a gap for operations especially. And one of the benefits is we have roadmaps for our products. We have minimal viable products. So if there is something wrong in our planning or we have um, misunderstanding of the requirements of our customers, we, can, we, we are able to do pivoting on the um, features of these products very fast. It's a model for fail fast and fail safe. This is the phase we are currently working in, so we call it the rise of the titan because it's huge. Um, these are the products, the 60 products that we are currently developing. There is nearly everything that you can, Im can imagine a private cloud model. Some of this is hybrid cloud model as well. Um, but we had, uh, have also products like cross services, for example. That's automation, all the methodologies that we need, guidelines for, um, for the developers or the workloads to be integrated on the cloud. Um, as well as um, workload onboarding. This is very, very important. You have to consult your customers, your future customers. And these customers may come from a more legacy model as well. You have to consult them. You have to help them to leverage all the new technologies and all the things that they want to use and consume on the cloud and make them understand the model that you're working in. So now it's my turn. Thanks, Gerd. Um, <clears throat> Thanks for this talk and or for, for this part of the talk and f for all the support you and Mirantis are gi giving. So this is the second part and I'm responsible, among other things, for the operations of the uh, group IT cloud, of the on-site uh, group IT cloud. And what all people tell you is you have to change your organization to be successful with cloud. What so far to me nobody pointed out of exactly how I should do this. I haven't got a recipe either, but I, uh, I would like to invite you to share um, some experiences, some consequences we, uh, or some recommendations we draw from this and how we want to proceed on, uh, on this matter. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask straight away. Uh, we will have a Q&A afterwards as well. So, yeah, we'll see how. Oh. So, um, Gerd pointed out that um, not all of you will, uh, will be aware of how traditional IT is, uh, is done. And um, um, I would like to start with, with the archimatics for server operations. So, if I have a server service, might be a Linux service, it uh, will in, uh, involve a lot of teams like server ops, server planning, storage, um, facilities, so uh, acclimatization and 
power supply. Um, we can go on forever, it, and it will involve like 150 people in, in total to, to give a, um, a service of, um, um, of that quality with all its drawbacks. Um, so imagine in this direction below and in this direction we con could virtually go on forever. We could describe more tasks, we could describe more, uh, more teams, it doesn't involve applications and so on. This model changes quite a lot. Um, we had a rough sketch um, where, uh, what parts, uh, the green ones, the cloud operation uh, team will be responsible for. So it's infrastructure lifecycle management, for instance, which was another department before. It will be the hardware for the Ceph storage as well. Um, it will be the controllers. It will contain, contain uh, serious parts of the network. Um, obviously, quite a small thing, at least here, the OpenStack control plane. Um, but there is lots of other things, infrastructure monitoring, infrastructure backend uh, and recovery, and so on, which was a shared responsibility before. So quite, quite a change from this one to quite a green field um, in both meanings of the word uh, in this diagram. And to make clear what changes and what challenges we had, uh, we took a couple of interviews. Uh, we have some co-authors, so to speak, um, and had and recorded a couple of different view, uh, point of, points of view, like customer, security team, and so on. And we will share some, some quotes or some expectations from, from these um, stakeholders, so to, so to speak. Um, and we will start with the, with the customer. The customer always challenges you with, with a public cloud uh, um, uh, supplier. In this case, we choose a AWS because it's by far the, the largest and by far uh, the one with the most services. And they say, AWS does it, that does have it. Why don't you? Yeah, because we just started. <laughs> Uh, so, the recommendation is you have to be very, very clear about your roadmap. You have to tell them, okay, it's not there. It might be there uh, at that point of time. You can uh, collab uh, collaborate, uh, giving us requirements or so on. Um, most people are quite happy if they know, okay, it's not there, but it will be there in half a year or a year or whatever. We are working together with a pro uh, uh, product thing on this. Then the cloud ops is always the last resort for, uh, for a problem. Um, in an organization like ours, people just call the cloud ops team and get informed that uh, while installing the tenant, they forgot a router and that's why there is no uh, network connectivity, for instance. Um, the recommendation we, uh, uh, we do, uh, draw from this is that you have to provide for the whole organization uh, proper customer training and onboarding. So it's, not, it's not like providing a website where they can fill in and it's, it's just not the way it is. What happens a lot is that people have problems with um, with the IT in general, and uh, use um, the cloud as, a, as an enabler to solve this problem. The most prominent is that people call me, yeah, but I just can't, uh, uh, can't develop software with a Windows client, which is the only client we provide as a group IT in Wolfsburg. Um, yeah, I don't have a good answer for this. Um, my recommendation is, stay very polite <laughs> when you come across uh, these kind of requests. Um, then there is a special thing in a, in a large organization which has had um, IT for a very, very long time and has mainframes and Oracle databases and 
Microsoft SQL databases, uh, name any technology, uh, we will have it. And um, obviously, people want to connect to back, uh, to back end systems and leg legacy systems. And this is kind of Pandora's box. If you start on this one, you, you'll end up in, in, in trouble in a way. And um, you have to be very strict about that you require statelessness because it will enable you to do uh, operations afterwards. But in a way that you help the customer uh, to create a migration plan. It might be that you first put the front end in, into the cloud and afterwards other parts like Ricardo did. Um, not that you don't, just don't say, okay, it's not possible. Um, so obviously my team is, um, has uh, some, uh, has a point of view as well. What struck me a lot as being part of IT for 15 years or so is that about 60% of the accepted incidents led to um, serious improvements of the, uh, of the, um, of the platform. So um, if something did not work, it wasn't fixed in one location and f the other locations were, f uh, were, um, were forgotten. Um, uh, which brings us to the uh, recommendation deploy immutable infrastructure. So do everything as code and do CICD. Be quite modest. Start with a very, very small test set and extend it. Um, because in a product uh, and project point of view, uh, if you start huge, it will be stripped from the product play. Uh, and if you have testing in place, you can quite, uh, quite easily in, uh, enlarge it, but you can't afterwards inject it. In which test cases in route? What struck me a lot, or most in this whole journey, was that uh, Hannes uh, did call me. Yeah, we had an incident with a uh, with a load balancer as a service. It restarted itself automatically, and we installed all the VMs. Coming from a point of view where such a decision would usually in, uh, take a meeting of approximately five manager to decide whether to, uh, to, uh, to restart it because some of the services are running and others aren't. Uh, yeah, be confident a lot of things really work. They, people just don't tell you if they work, they really work, they do. Um, and what, what we have had an experience is that there are two kinds of, uh, of users. We call them cloud citizens. Those are familiar, uh, familiar with, with AWS or Azure or whatever, which are critical and very demanding. And uh, cloud immigrants, um, they need a lot of help, but after that are quite happy. Um, what helped us there is that we have a, a concept uh, which is called tenant for free. They get a small and uh, one year free uh, tenant where they can just play around. And um, uh, after that, people knew what to expect and what not. This was, this helped a lot. So <coughs> of course my management takes a point of view as well. Actually part of my management is on site, so I have to be a bit polite on this. Um, cloud is, uh, one expectation or quote is, cloud is just a new platform. And this heavily, uh, uh, heavily underestimates the level of disruptiveness it has. Um, and um, I think we are quite um, successful in uh, telling people how disruptive this model is and how uh, huge the shift is uh, in responsibilities and all these things. Another expectation is, uh, uh, is 
that any new workload can, without any modification, run on the cloud. Um, a quote for this is, OpenStack is a cheap replacement uh, for VMware, which is not quite true. Um, what helps there is that you um, should have a good checklist what means cloud-ready or cloud-native, and by any means stick to these conditions. Uh, you will end up in a lot of trouble. Uh, another thing what, uh, what the management always says, not only in cloud, is that you can do it on top um, because you have too much spare time. I won't comment on this it's a general problem. Um, being a very European, very German organization, uh, we have specific employee, employer uh, expectations. And one is that we stick to our stuff very, very long. It's quite common that somebody starts at VW uh, his or her ca career and ends his or her career uh, like 35 years or 45 years later, uh, which means um, people are, uh, technologies are replaced person where people are not. Our recommendation uh, is that, that you have to train and qualify uh, the staff a lot for cloud operations, which brings me to the next point. Um, experienced staff is hard to find, um, at least in Germany, but I get the impression that every other boss is having VR hiring, so it doesn't seem to be a German problem alone. Yeah, see above, you have to train. Um, uh, if it takes longer, then it takes longer. Um, another thing which I embrace a lot is that my management, uh, or the general management, sees this as um, sees a lot of synergies. Uh, they want us to deploy the fitting uh, technologies from cloud, like lots of testing, like CICD, like config management, name it, to be pushed back to traditional IT, to have uh, synergies, to have more advancement in traditional IT. And um, uh, I find, uh, find this a very good idea, and uh, we try to solve is to take people, so to speak, part-time from, from the traditional IT job, being a networker, being a storage guy, being a server guy or doing config management in traditional IT and deploy them in, IT, uh, in the cloud. And especially we make them responsible for a new product. Um, and people are not uh, the way that they just forget uh, when they have a, uh, forget about it uh, when they do the other job. They see, yeah, okay, this is, this is the same. I can deploy the same tool, the same software, the same whatever, uh, the same principle there and there. The security team is, they are not on site, but I have to, uh, have to give them uh, my high regards. They, they did start off this journey with us and uh, they were very collaborative. Um, and both of us learned a lot on this. Um, their initial point of view was, okay, we have a set of rules, we apply it to this technology as well, which does not work too good. So recommendation from our side is, involve them as soon as possible. Basically at the first, uh, first meeting, invite them, we want to do this and this and this, um, help them to, uh, to do policy involve, uh, involvement, train them in the technology as you train your own stuff. Uh, they, will, uh, they will be much more understanding and they, they did a very good job on this. Um, then the, the one thing which is uh, always so to speak, unfair to the infrastructure. The platform has to compensate for any deficiency uh, the, 
the application has. Um, that's why we have that many firewalls, um, which the platform is not really responsible for. Our solution is, which we will implement in the next phase, is we will have user-specific tenant types. We will have managed uh, uh, types where, uh, where they can't fiddle around with the, with the network uh, too much, and we will have unmanaged where they need uh, tight security uh, approval and where they will have to, to address risks and countermeasures and all these things. And one quote from them is, no programmer or developers cares about uh, security. And I can understand their point of view on this. Um, our recommendation is embrace security concerns. Tell them, yeah, okay, we know there is a loophole, there is some risk. And we did this and this. And from a technical point of view, uh, you should uh, introduce security screening as part of your, uh, uh, as part of your uh, application CI/CD. So what we do is we screen the images we generate for some known mistakes and all these things, um, which is a very good idea. And um, last but not least, the developer po uh, developer's point of view is, for instance, GitHub, Bitbucket, any mirror you can name, um, is a reliable, secure source of uh, uh, software to be used in the, in the cloud. And this is not quite true. And as Gerd uh, pointed out, uh, the private cloud is required to do a surplus to AWS. We surplus in enforcing security rules, for instance. Um, hence, we, we restrict uh, access to these software uh, things. It's a hard work, but uh, you have to explain your developers why you do this, why you don't want them, them to use Bitbucket or whatever directly, and that there are things they can use in a, in a matter, and that it has got consequences, legal uh, consequences, IT security, uh, uh, consequences. It might have uh, even financial consequences if somebody decides on installing Oracle in the cloud, because you will need a software license for this. Um, uh, what uh, what they expect as well is that bug fixing uh, has to be has to occur instantly. Uh, we learned this quite a hard way. And we suggest that you do the testing together with, uh, with, your, uh, with your developers, so that they really test end-to-end, -end, that, that they test the infrastructure as well as the application, and so on. And uh, another point of view they take is um, um, <coughs> they want to have non-invasive uh, bug fixing, which is hard. Um, the so recommendation is that, again, communication, be precise and strict about your service levels um, and about the state of the product. When will they have multiple clouds? When will they have a global load balancer and so on? We do struggle. Uh, Gerd added sometimes without <laughs> me knowing. <laughs> My point of view is we struggle a lot. Um, I don't want to, to lie to you. Um, just another point of view. So it, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have, I addressed this already, too few resources and skills. This is a general problem. It's worsened in our situation, and I think in every cloud start project that, uh, uh, that uh, new products come into production that fast that, that there is no relaxation time. Uh, after you finish the first one, you, you get straight to the next one. Um, what I find personally very, uh, very hard is troubleshooting in deep network issues. Um, this is, from my point of view, the far, uh, the far hardest. 
we do struggle in configuration management, in particular in orchest orchestration. Applying updates to the environment we struggle with. We struggle with uh, to automate uh, configuration changes to the environment. This kind of works, but having subsequent actions in other systems is hard and to automate them. So if you, if you uh, change a, a, a parameter on some log file uh, collection thing, you, have to, you might have to restart a couple of services on other computers as well, which is hard. <coughs> and so to speak, the, the next generation art is to disrupt without uh, disruption. So to summarize, the recommendations be very t transparent about your capabilities, about your restrictions, about your roadmap. Be patient and kind. All I myself hadn't got a clue like 12 or 18 months ago what the cloud is about. Um, and most of my customers are in this, this situation now. Give them time to, uh, to learn this as well. Be aware, it's not just another uh, product, it changes the game. Walk in their shoes. What we learned a lot from is that we have certain, let's say, services which support the cloud, like mirrors, like uh, repositories, customer portal, and it's very beneficial if you do them in cloud, uh, as a cloud native uh, uh, application where, uh, where possible. It teaches you a lot. Be communicative, uh, do management of expectations, it's the same one as the first one. Or be preemptive of an overwhelming uh, demand. People do want this. They actually do. Um, they might use it. <laughs> and they might come up with incidents. Um, so if you don't do this, and we are struggling there as well a bit. Um, you might be a victim of your own success. You, um, you opened a box of candies, and now the whole school is gathering around you, uh, so to speak. Surprisingly, little problems are technical. Uh, almost all about skills, resources, and the shift of responsibilities. And uh, we did uh, state two contributors already, which were Hannes and uh, Ricardo. There were two others, Fabio and uh, Nadeshta, um, who helped us uh, being interviewed, sharing their experience uh, to us. Uh, thanks a lot again to this. And next slide is Q&A. We have questions. Yeah. So there so doesn't seem to be a micro. Can you go to, to the mic? Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Sorry. Do you have plans to extend the open, open stack usage beyond the uh, cloud applications? Let's say DDI. Uh, classical servers, legacy servers, or do you think it's not possible for a company like you? I don't know if I get it correctly. Um, could yeah. you please repeat? Uh, from my company, we are explo uh, exploring uh, different usages. For example, the DDI uh, problem uh, on top of OpenStack. Uh, for example, uh, SAP on top of OpenStack. This is not what you have been told. Uh, do you think this is possible? Or is not yet in your map. Uh, I personally think it's possible, but very demanding. Yeah. So it's a, it's a challenge, but I think it's possible. Uh, uh, we do uh, we do do low hanging fruits first. So and this is not a low hanging fruit from our yeah. perspective. We we have a cloud first strategy. So um, our aim is to preferably move first cloud-ready applications to the cloud because it's easier. 
Um, that's why we refer to don't open Pandora's box in, with uh, providing a lot of um, connections to the backend because then you have a problem to provide these backend connections on other locations as well. It's a very, uh, it's a huge set of dependencies. Um, in the future, it might be possible to move other workloads as well over there. So we have a lot of discussions in this onboarding, uh, workload onboarding team, for example, to move more demanding or, or challenging applications to the cloud as well. If it will be VDI, for example, at the end, I don't know. Could be the case. Depends on the requirements for the underlying um, infrastructure. Could you explain something about the balance between um, the um, application centers or groups that would welcome what you're doing and would really want it and pull, and the difference between maybe something that's maybe ordained at a high level of management where it's actually something that is required to be pushed? So, okay, I, I got the question. Um, so. Um, there is no real resistance to this project uh, because we don't force anybody really to use it. We said we want to have a, uh, we want to have a, a, a very good offer, and if it's not good enough uh, or not good for a specific project, uh, both can walk their ways, so to speak. So there is no real resistance to the project. Um, we do have as Volkswagen as a whole, a strategy to develop new uh, applications cloud-ready. Who does uh, like this most? I would guess developers first. Uh, they don't have to, uh, to fiddle around with, uh, with processes to get a server to just to test something. Um, after that, I'll, I would guess web-prone uh, 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 applications are ob obviously uh, uh, most uh, happy to use this because they can. It's not about OpenStack and IIS, but because of the whole techniques they have uh, at hand there, which they didn't before. Um, so, yeah. I think there, there is another demanding group. Um, there is the expectation with some workloads that they would save a lot of money if they would move their workload to the cloud. Um, but that's not necessarily true. It depends. So um, the goal why these workloads want to move to the cloud might be different from the other ones. And um, you have to explain very in detail and clearly why it might be not a good idea to move this specific workload uh, to the cloud because he consumes uh, non-HA, non-cloud-ready backend service, for example, and don't have this connection, and you don't want to provide this connection because it um, interferes with your cloud model. It's just... Thanks for the presentation. Uh, I s okay. So I see that uh, you have a lot of requirements as the biggest enterprise in the world. And I know how internals of OpenStack. So I'm interested uh, how many OpenStack projects you invaded, uh, did some patching, developing, etc. I saw uh, Sean's presentation about Keystone policies. And uh, as I understand, Keystone was patched to meet uh, your requirements. So did you patch Nova, Neutron, other services? Uh, how many developers are working on? Unfortunately, I haven't seen your presentation, so I'm yeah, lacking information here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's vanilla open stack. Yeah. Is open stack. Okay. Mm. So, this, okay. so I would like to add a customer's perspective to this. Uh, um, I'm not aware of any uh, page to uh, to. Um, to uh, the Man Mirantis OpenStack distribution. Um, I'm aware of uh, quite substantial configuration because of network restra uh, restraints, uh, because of the way we provide, for instance, mirrors um, and so on. So it's, um, 
no, not specific, but uh, um, by configuration. What I'm aware of, I don't know whether this uh, counts as is policy.conf, which is always a pain. You know this. So I do think we are overdoing our time as, as far as I'm <laughs> getting the, the movement. So thanks for your patience. Thanks, a lot. thanks for your time. <laughs>